Welcome to the Public Works and Gang Reduction Committee meeting. Um, Councilmember Joe Buscaino, and I'm joined by Councilmember Curran Price of the new 9th District. Right? <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Price. Um, okay, Michael, let's look at the agenda here. I, um, I'm going to open a general public comment at this point. I don't. We don't have any cards for general public comment, so we'll close general public comment. And um, looking at the agenda, we're going to approve items 2, 6, 7, and 11 on consent. Unless uh, Mr. Price has... Uh, no, no objection. You're good with that? 2, 6, 7. And 11. We'll approve those four items on consent. And if we can, Michael, um, send uh, item 7 mm -hmm. to Council, schedule that for October 9th. October 9th. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm excited about, um, we're going to take items 8 and 9 together, uh, presentation that's going to be um, done here by um, the board, uh, the, the BOE rather. Um, if you can read both items into the record, please. Item number eight is a report from the Board of Public Works relative to rescinding the request to prepare an ordinance authorizing city departments to require reservations in the public right-of-way as detailed in Council File Number 08-1369 and repealing Los Angeles Municipal Code okay. 62251. Item number nine is a motion from Council Members Englander and Buscaino relative to utilizing a cloud-based public right-of-way activity coordination system. Great. Um, as everyone knows, I'm working with my colleague, um, Councilman Mitch Englander, on a, on a proposal to fix every broken street in the city uh, through our Save Our Streets LA initiative. Uh, what complaint we've heard consistently from residents when we took this public works committee out on the road um, is that it seems there's little to no coordination over and oversight by the city regarding construction that occurs on our streets. Uh, for example, uh, Bureau of Street Services will resurface the street, and a couple of months later, Department of Water and Power will dig a trench down the middle and install a new main water line. Uh, and this, like my, I mean, for me too, it drives people nuts. Um, and it makes us uh, look that we don't, uh, looks like we just don't know what we're doing and the right hand is not talking to the left. Uh, if we are asking residents to approve funding to fix our broken streets, then uh, we need to make sure we uh, get our act together and do a better job of coordinating construction, utility, and resurfacing work. Um, I'll ask the Bureau of Engineering to, uh, if we can have them come forward, um, give an overview of the current public way reservation system and the, the changes uh, that are recommended with regards to enforcing the use of the system in the Board of Public Works report. And after BOE, I'll, I'll call up Steve Nahano, N Nataro, sorry, uh, who represents a company called Invista and ask him to give a demonstration to this committee on the right-of-way coordination uh, software his company has designed. So with that, thank you for being here. And... Um, um, questions uh, from for me. I want you to introduce yourself for the record. Good morning, council members. My name is Randy Price from the Bureau of Engineering. And for this particular item, um, uh, the motion to rescind uh, the existing PWRS ordinance and um, um, and adopt the report and recommendations of the Bureau of Engineering. I'll start with a, with a brief um, history of, of, the, of that process. On September the 28th, 2006, the city added LA Municipal Code Section 62251 to establish a pilot program called the Public Way Reservation System. This was in the uh, Bureau of Engineering Central Engin Engineering District, which runs roughly from uh, Fairfax to the west to the eastern city boundary and from Mulholland on the north down to 120th Street. So this was a pilot program that, that was uh, implemented by the Bureau of Engineering. The purpose of, the, of this program was to coordinate activities in the public right-of-way to minimize the impact of, of those activities on residents, businesses, and traffic. 
The PWRS implemented an online web-based application to provide an effective tool to capture all street construction and regulated activities that take place in the streets with the, um, with the uh, name of the entity, the schedule, contact information, and work descriptions so that activities could be effectively coordinated to minimize their impact on traffic. At the end of the pilot program, the BOE prepared a report and submitted it to the Board of Public Works and the, and the Council for their consideration. In July 2009, the City Council adopted the report from BOE recommending that the LA Municipal Code be amended to apply to the entire city and directed the City Attorney to draft the ordinance for adoption. In the process of drafting the ordinance to implement the PWRS citywide, uh, some concerns were raised about the ordinance and, and to, as to whether it was the best approach to implement the program. Some of the concerns were the language of the ordinance was considered too broad and could apply to anyone occupying the public right away for more than four hours. Uh, as an example, um, we were told that residents who put their trash bins at the curb and leave them out all day would fall under the, um, the PWRS ordinance. The PWRS was envisioned as an honor system whereby those with reservations would police one another. If there was a conflict at a location and it could not be resolved by the participants, the, the entities would appeal to the district engineer to mediate the conflict. Um, a violation of the LAMC is a misdemeanor or uh, an infraction. And the ordinance, uh, the PWR, PWRS ordinance, uh, as written, does not impose any civil penalties that can be administratively imposed. Um, imposing civil penalties would require the establishment of uh, an enforcement process, administrative hearings, and public notices that would need to be funded by regulatory fees. At that time, the intent was to minimize the regulatory burdens on persons doing business in the city. So it was concluded that this program could be effectively implemented citywide through the existing permitting authority. Therefore, it was, it was recommended, and the report recommends, that the LA Municipal Code 62251, which is only a pilot program in the Central District, be rescinded and specific language added to all city permits that would require the applicant to make a reservation in the online system and coordinate all activities prior to occupying the street. Uh, a mayor's directive would be sent to all general managers directing city departments to make a reservation prior to occupying the street. Failure to comply would provide grounds for the city to prevent the applicant from occupying the street until they were in compliance with these requirements. So in, in conclusion, to wrap it up, uh, this report recommends expanding the public way res reservation system citywide, but implementing it as a condition on the permits issued by the city and by mayoral directive for all uh, other city departments. So you're saying that work hasn't been done to upgrade the, um, the system? The, the current system was uh, developed in 2005 using map guide uh, uh, technology, which is an Autodesk product. We are currently in the process of upgrading the system to uh, ArcGIS uh, server technology. And so that will be completed uh, sometime in the spring. Any other bureaus or departments using the system or uh, focusing on um, PWRS? Any, uh, do you find um, their permitting functions, are, are they integrated into the PWRS? We have, uh, within each, each department is, is uh, somewhat different. We have, um, for the Bureau of Street Services, we have a module of the PWRS that they use as a part of their permitting process. Mm -hmm. So they have staff that when they issue a permit, whether it is a building materials permit or a special events permit, then their staff has a module that they enter that information in. Mm -hmm. They put, place the location and reserve the space. Um, and who has access to the PWRS? The PWRS is on the internet, so generally it's available to anyone to uh, access it and uh, there's get no a limited access to it. No, there's okay. no limited access to it. The input is typically within the Bureau of Engineering. Uh, all of Bureau, all of the Bureau of Engineering's capital projects and uh, all permits issued are uh, automatically uh, go into the PWRS system. Yeah. We have a uh, connection with DWP, so we capture uh, a certain number of their activities that automatically go into PWRS. For uh, LAPD, which issues the First Amendment permits, then uh, they are a 
somewhat uh, paper-based system. And uh, part of that is because their application is by the general public and they fill out a paper application. So typically they will fax us a copy of the uh, permit and we put that in. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are, um, I think, the probably the, the biggest players, the ones that we have that have that enter. All, all departments are part of the PWRS right now. But it's, how cooperative are the other city departments and other utility companies in using uh, the, the PWRS? They're very cooperative or can there be more work? Generally, they're very co cooperative. You know, we, we find that um, we also have uh, a um, web-based connection with Film LA, so their mm -hmm. activities go in. Um, we find that the biggest users of PWRS are the film Film LA mm -hmm. and the Bureau of Street Services. Uh, typically, the Bureau of Street Services street use inspectors find it very useful, so they generate a lot of reports for, for uh, their activities. Um, Film LA, of course, finds it very useful because they want to know where uh, or what problems they're going to encounter for a filming location. Um, and so, in general, we get approximately um, I'll say on average 600 users per month that use the system. We generate uh, approximately, I don't have the numbers in front of me, to, to try to remember something like uh, 30,000 conflict reports a year. So it, it gets, you know, a fair amount of use. There's no doubt that um, greater promotion, publicity, um, <coughs> a better tool would make it more effective. But uh, it overall it's been... Um, you know, it's been fairly useful for the people within the city and, and those that use it. And I, I've seen um, I, I've seen the system up and running. And I'd like, to, as an educational tool, use um, if you can project here. If you can tap into can help me and, and show um, my colleague, um, Mr. Price, show him how the system works. It'd be really helpful. Sure. Thank you. Okay, this is let me see. This is the public way reservation system. As I said, it, it's uh, old technology. It's uh, old technology. Uh, we're in the process of upgrading this now, and so typically, this is what the technology is developed in house. Was this developed? Yes, this was written in house by staff in my office. So. The, the upgrade should be out it, it, uh, by June of uh, uh, 2014, should be done, if not before. So. so typically, this is what the public would see or anybody that uses it. They come into this, to this interface, a very simple interface. So the first thing they would do is search for a location, the location that they're interested in. It would be they can search by street, address, or by intersection. Uh, for the hundreds of listeners, he's typing in an address. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I don't really like these. Uh, I'm much better with a mouse than I am with the. Municipalities using uh, using this system, using our system. Uh, no, we're we're the only only one in uh, the LA County I, that I know I'm aware of that uses this. So I entered the address. It will zoom to the location. I entered 200 North Main Street, City Hall, and what pops up then? I entered also entered a date range. So it it pops up the activities, which you see essentially in, as hashed marks or line marks which are uh, currently active during that month. And so the next step that people would do is generate a report of those activities.
I left it at a thousand foot buffer, but you have a choice on the how far out you want to go. And then it generates a, a list of all the activities that are occurring within that time period. And so once you generate the list, the list contains a description of the activity, um, the contact information, the phone number, uh, an email address if they provide an email address, and uh, um, you can get a more uh, detailed report of what each acti activity is. I'll click on a few so you can see what's uh, coming up. So there's a filming activity called Best Man that is scheduled for uh, October the 18th, October the 19th. Is that in the green bike link? Just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's another filming activity, Hugo Boss. There's a LADWP power project for uh, 920, it starts at 920, and goes through 1020, and it is to uh, a power infrastructure project, power distribution uh, for central district headquarters. And went too far. This is the Ciclavia event that's coming upcoming. So that's a sample of what the type of thing that you could, that you find and people would use to coordinate their activities or schedule their construction activities. Thank you. Um, before I bring up um, Steve, uh, to turn over to Mr. Price for questions. Um, just uh, just a couple of quick ones. How long has this test been going on? This is beta. We roll this out. Right. We roll this out in 2006. So about seven years that it's been going on. We actually it came out as a pilot project, but we capture all BOE projects citywide. We capture um, the activities that aren't really captured citywide or film, filming activities. They're really only in the central area. Um, and, um, but most everything else, I can't think of anything else that's not captured citywide. And are there any penalties for not doing that, for not using this? I mean, aside from the, the time that's wasted and inconvenience and... Right. Um, are there any penalties or... There, there are no penalties and no enforcement that was provided as a part of that ordinance. Uh, it was really intended as uh, a way for, if there are two entities that attempt to do something in the same location, they can get that resolved by calling uh, the Bureau of Engineering. We have had a few, few occasions uh, over the last seven years where that has occurred. Typically when it was first rolled out, we had more occasions, but they sort of tapered off. And typically it was a uh, conflict between a filming activity and some other construction activity that was going on. So, so you don't see a need to, to impose any, any sanctions or penalties? Or I think it depends on upon the goal of the program. Uh, y you know, there are, um, when this was adopted and was going forward, it was more as a coordination tool for everyone involved in doing that kind of work. Uh, there was felt, it was felt at that time that, you know, we did not want to develop uh, uh, an administrative process or a uh, uh, punitive process for people doing business in the city and it was rather an, an opportunity to get, to get them to talk together, to give them the information that they would need so that they could contact one another and uh, go in that route. And still performing that function. Yes, yeah. So we didn't want to slow them down, but we did want them to do a better job, essentially. And, um, you know, that said, there are still two, uh, in a sense, enforcement groups that work within the public right away, and that's the contract administration inspectors and the building, uh, Bureau of Street Services street use inspectors. And they do use this tool, and they can, um, if someone is, is not in the street or not cooperating them, they can use that this as a resource to find out who should be there, who shouldn't be there, and take some action within their authority. But typically, it's, it's more a, an honor-based system and a system where we rely upon the uh, people that are occupying that street to make one another comply with the rules of occupying the street. 
So what kind of changes are you contemplating making? Just making it faster, making it exactly for our for us right now. Our our plan has been our plan for uh, for quite a while. We're we're going through all of our applications. The Bureau of Engineering has used this software for many years. Uh, it was a very robust and very good software for us. The Bureau of Engin the city as a as an entity has a, an extremely large amount of information. And we found that these mapping uh, softwares that provide uh, our information to the web, most of them were incapable of uh, providing all the information that we had. They just were too slow and wouldn't work. MapGuide was one of the few that did work very well. That is no longer the case. Over the last few years, uh, more companies have uh, adopted uh, web-based tools and uh, web-based mapping has become more robust. Uh, we now use Esri technology. The city is pretty much on the Esri platform. And so we're converting all of these applications, uh, not just uh, the PWRS, but we have Navigate LA. We have a number of other applications that use that map guide technology that we're in the process of converting over. So our, our first priority was to convert Navigate LA then we have something called map notes, and we have our permitting application, and we all have all these applications that use this old technology, and we're in the middle of that full conversion. The PWRS is scheduled to be converted starting in January. Uh, we, if we get through some of our other tasks before then, we will convert it over to Esri technology, and it just gives it a fresher look. You can it, you can add more functionality. It uh, gives it more of that Google modern look for a map, a single search engine, much easier to do f the filtering type things. So. Thank you. Thanks, Randy, for uh, that comprehensive report. I appreciate it. I want to call up Steve Nataro, um, who is here uh, with Invista. And um, I'll give you two minutes just to explain um, what you do, talk a little bit about your software and how different it is uh, than the PWRS uh, software. Great. Thank you, Councilman. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me here today. Again, my name is Steve Mataro. I'm with Invista Corporation. And uh, like I say, I appreciate the time for, for being here. We've had a good opportunity to spend quite a bit of time with the city over the last two years. Um, just kind of high level, we've spent time with um, the majority of the departments within the city, as well as many external organizations, um, which is what we do globally. Um, just a little bit about Invista. Uh, as we're talking here today, we specialize in helping coordinate all the activities in the right of way. We built a tool uh, that is based out of MIT in 2006. And we have spent the last uh, coming on eight years uh, making the product what it is today. We have over 250 clients today, uh, cities such as the City of London, um, Nashville, Washington, D.C., Baltimore, San Francisco, and of course, as I mentioned, many others, um, as well as utility companies that help uh, in those areas. So the reason our product was built was to help, again, uh, identify and coordinate all these opportunities where are typically missed to work together and deliver uh, savings and efficiencies in municipalities and utility companies. Um, we typically uh, save cities like the city of Baltimore uh, very quickly. We identify conflicts where they can uh, generate savings. Uh, the city of Baltimore saved almost a million dollars in the first 90 days of working with us, and that's very similar with all of our clients. Um, we typically have somewhere between a 6 and 8x um, return on investment um, for working with us. We have, as, as was described with the previous offering, we continually build out our product. It was originally based on utility coordination. We built that out to now have special event coordination, a permitting component, asset management, uh, incidents um, as well, uh, helping coordinate incidents that happen in the right of way. Um, and as well as taking what, all this information to what's called a citizen's view and sharing this with all uh, citizens of the city of L.A. or wherever we may be. Can you use a smartphone with your software? Uh, you can today. You can be, being that it's web-based, software as a service, you can use any uh, device. And we're actually on our roadmap in 2014. We're coming out with a true mobile app where it's a little bit easier to navigate on smaller devices like that. But today on a tablet, you certainly can. Um, it's, it's usable for all disciplines within uh, an, a municipality. We built it based on feedback from these 250 clients, and we typically run out upgrades about every three months and change our software. And, and as we change it and improve it, it benefits all of those clients that we have. So today. isn't PWRS doing that now? Um, or how, how are you specifically different? Yeah, so, so some of the core differences. We have a conflict generator within uh, Invista. Um, not only for internal Play use. A conflict generator. Yep, yep. So a conflict generator not only within the municipality, but also taking into account all external agencies, being that it's web-based. 
we not only can leverage all the internal departments that have various systems that they use, but also external utilities or the county or MTA, or Film LA, um, and, and you're able to lay all this information on top of one another and generate um, opportunities to work together and deliver conflicts. Um, it's, it's, we're the only organization that has a conflict generator like that that is web-based um, and has proven, like I say, with over 250 clients. Um, so that's been very successful. That's, that's what we pride ourselves on. And, and again, we continually build out the product. We're going to have the opportunity um, to, to share with you uh, our system live, doing a demo utilizing San Francisco, uh, who we just rolled out with over the last six months. I have my colleague, Brian Berdinier, on the line, um, who is a GIS uh, consultant and uh, project manager for us that, that knows our software extremely well and works with clients every day. Um, so we'll, we'll dive into that, and I may plug in here and there. Please ask questions. Brian can hear you very well, and if necessary, I may repeat the questions if, if he needs that. Um, but again, appreciate the opportunity to be here, and uh, I'll hand it over to Brian for the next few minutes. Okay. Uh, Brian, thanks for joining us. All right. Thank you so much. Um, as Steve uh, noted, we are a software as a service, so we're very usable in Firefox, Internet Explorer, Chrome, and any any major browsers. Everybody gets a unique login and password to bring them into the system. And they walk, when they log in, they see their version of the interface. So in this case, I'm logged in to the city of San Francisco. And you can see across the top here, we have all the modules that they're currently using, projects, which includes both projects, uh, moratoriums or street guarantees, if you will, and then opportunities that are um, designated for people to work together. Uh, we have events, and then for San Francisco, they're using our ticketing module, which allows them to uh, run their notice of intent process, so anytime you see any of these projects in here, they can automatically create a ticket off of it, and we build the workflow out that it sends the information out, complete with documents, to any of the external agencies, such as PG&E, um, AT&T, and Comcast, and so on. Mm. Um, as Steve knows, we have a conflict uh, management module, so conflicts are generated in a spatial and temporal standpoint, so the system automatically assesses the conflicts between the organizations, and it sends out an automatic notification to all the parties. Mm -hmm. So each party gets a notification in this manner. They can click on the link, it'll take them right into the system, and they can begin to use our conflict management resolution system to manage this conflict. And as you can see, it tells them everything they need to know about the projects that are in conflict. Mm. Um, also, you can see we have a document management module. Um, everybody gets their own mailbox. And then the tasks are associated with the workflow. So the, the system then is based in three major areas. We have our filters over here on the left. Uh, we have our map. And we have our table. The map and table are synchronized together, so when you click on a project in the table, it takes you to that project in the map. You click on a project in the map, it brings up the information in the table. The filters allow you, similar to what you're doing with your system, to constrain your data and see it in any way, shape, or form that you would like to see it. So you can see that uh, we have our facility types over here on the left, which are based on the 811 call system. And you know we have uh, yellow is gas, orange is communication, and so on and so forth, and those are represented here in the map. And you can filter that data um, by these um, various uh, different uh, types. You can filter this information by type and by dates. And you can also filter by the owners. And you can see here in San Francisco all the different organizations that are playing and actually putting all their projects into the system. So they all have their own unique logins and passwords and they go into the system and they manage their data. So let's drill just a little bit in. I'm going to um, double click on one of the projects here. See that runs me right into, into the project. You'll notice across the top we can, um, we can view information. We can add new projects. Um, you can add projects by typing in addresses, street intersections. You can actually draw the projects. So you can see here we have draw tools that let you draw mm -hmm. projects. Um, but if we just click on the, um, on the add button here a second, it'll pop up the dialog box. And we, can, and we can look at what you can do with a new project. And this requires a certain amount of information a project ID, a project name, 
uh, have a list, a drop-down list of all the people that are in the system, and they'll be the project contacts. We'll have a start date and an end date for construction. You select your facility type that you're doing, and, and with that, you can move on and actually create a project. And again, you can draw it in using our draw tools, or you can enter information in. Um, another way to get data into the system is through data exchange. So we support Esri data, we support Excel spreadsheets, CSV files, and we can also establish, and this is what the City of San Francisco is doing, their Bureau of Street Mapping is using a API. So they have their own um, back-end project system, and they are writing data through our API, our product application protocol interface into the system. So any updates, changes, and all that information are being written through the importing routine through the application protocol in interface. So we have many options for you to be able to get data in. Um, we, have, we also have editing, so you can edit that data and update it as you go along. I mentioned the ticketing for San Francisco, so they're actually using our relates where they create a ticket through through relating a project, so it, it's based on an existing project and they can relate a ticket to it. Um, you can analyze data, so you can bring GIS layers in as strict data, and you can, you can look at that data relative to any of the projects that are going on, assess projects that are occurring within 1,000 feet, assess utilities that are within, a thousand feet and do things of that nature. And then we have a re report function, um, has standard reports that you can select from the list of and generate out a report. So in this case, you can generate out uh, projects that are under construction or scheduled in the last 90 days. And when you do that, you'll get a nice little uh, pre-designed report that you can then print out and uh, or send out as you need for different um, individuals who need access to it. All right, so let's get our uh, screen back up here. All right, so let's close that window there a minute. All right, so we, we jumped into one of our projects, and what I wanted to show you here was we'll go in and we'll take a look at that project. You can see when I click on it, it brings up a quick list of information associated with that project. Um, again, you can view it. If you have the rights to it, you can edit it. You can send one-off notifications to other individuals who you might want to send an email about it on. Um, you have the ability to add impacts, so you can add street closures and detour routes and impacts that are associated with the, with the project. And then again, we have analyzing tools that allow you to analyze this project. I'm going to jump into the view here real quick for you and just want to give you a feel for what you find when you're in the view. So the view has everything you could ever ask and want to know about this project. And of course, everything that you'll find here is based on the information that's been placed into the system, but you can tell who the owner is. So that list of owners I showed you on the left-hand side of the individuals in the San Francisco system. The Project Management Bureau is one of those owners. This is their project. Um, this is the individual responsible for it. You can click on that, send them a yes, quick clear. email. Uh, you have dates that are associated with the project. Yeah. And as we go on down, you can continue to see more and more information. So interestingly enough, uh, San Francisco entered approximately 1,800 projects, and you can see that many of them have what we call conflicts. Um, so let's just uh, take a look at one of these conflicts. So uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at uh, this roadway project conflict and, and go ahead and view it. But now we can go in and we can view that conflict and we can see what's going on with that conflict and who's involved in it. The individuals responsible for these projects on both sides of the aisle can now manage that conflict through the conflict resolution system and they can change their conflict status. So if this individual wants to acknowledge that or coordinate it or permanently coordinate it with this individual on this side of the fence, they can go through and do that. And what will happen then is one of those notifications that I showed you, they will get a notification and they will continue to work through and 
and take care of this conflict. Now, the nice thing about Invista is we track all this information for you. We track it historically, always stored in the system. And again, that's why I'm showing you this view window is because everything in this view is everything about this project. Mm. So we can manage documents with it. Um, we can manage, again, the workflow and the tasks that are going on. We can, we can manage parent-child relationships as well. So if you have a project that has water, sewer, and road all combined into it, you can have child projects, if you will, of one overarching project. Hey, Brian, in respect for time, can you cut the citizen's view to give the opportunity for the group here just to see that? And, uh, and, and then I will have, probably need to wrap up. But if you can cut to that, that would be great. Okay. So one real quick thing, I just, and you can see here's a ticket that's in the ticketing process for them. All right. So let's jump over to Citizens View for you. And while Brian's pulling that up, just real quick to speak on what Citizens View is, again, we're taking all this information that is stored. We are not replicating or duplicating efforts to pull it out. We're, we're pulling out the information that you would want citizens to see, and then it looks like what you see up on the screen here. Mm. I'll let Brian pick up from there. All right, so here's the Citizens View, and as you can see, Citizens View is based over top of a Google map, so it's a very familiar interface mm. for most individuals in the general public. So that litany of items I showed you in the view there about these projects, where you can choose how much information you want to provide to the citizens. So in this case, you can see, again, you've got the owner of the project. Um, you've got the contact. You can quickly send them an email. Um, and then just the location and, the, and some other information about that. Again, it's a Google map, so you can, you can go through and you can search. Uh, we've added the events in, in this case, so you can see some of the different events that are going on. But, um, you know, they've got some various things going on, so I've zoomed way out here. Um, you can see an event here and uh, the person managing the Autumn Moon Festival. So people can search out events nice. uh, or they can search out projects, and, and they get a little bit of the functionality to it, being able to turn turn all the projects on or turn all the projects off and go through and, and search out this information. Very good. All right. Thank you, Brian. So just in closing real quick, so yep. again, while this revolves around project coordination, there's a whole lot more to it, which of course we could, we could spend a lot of time going into, which we're not, of course, going to do today, but it's beyond... Uh, road construction and, and project coordination, yeah, special events, public safety has use for this, as well as all the other outside agencies that you work with. How time consuming is it to integrate what we currently have into your system? Yeah, so I have 20 years in technology. We, we, um, I'm used to technology. It takes a, a very long time. This could be up and running in one to three months. We brought the City of London up in two weeks to get them prepared for the Olympics. Which city? The city of London. In London, uh. Um, so it's, it's a very easy system to get up and running. Of course, you're, you're building it out as you go, but it's up, running, functional in one to three months for a city of this size. Mr. Yep. Price, questions? Yep. Uh, no. Okay. Thank you very much Thank for you. your report. Um, I appreciate it. I want to um, continue uh, items eight and nine. And I know for item nine specifically, the CLA and CAO are working on a report back from the SOSLA initiative. And this is one of the items that uh, Mitch and I asked for a report back. Also, um, please proceed with that report, but um, to be sure to include a side-by-side -side analysis of the features of Invista versus PWRS and provide a cost comparison of what it will take to upgrade PWRS as opposed to switching to Invista. Um, and if you can, please, uh, in that report, recommend next steps for this committee uh, it should take um, for for both options. Uh, with that, um, thanks again to our presenters uh, for their report. Um, okay, let's take um, item number one. If you can read that into the, the record, please, Michael. Item number one is a report from the Bureau of Engineering relative to the vacation of a portion of the east-west alley westerly of Gailey Avenue between Kincross Avenue and Wilshire Boulevard. So we heard this earlier this year, didn't we? Yes, this was continued from a meeting of June 12th. This is with um, UCLA folks? Yes, sir. Okay, let's take um, speaker cards uh, first. Uh, if we can have Cindy uh, st start it. Hi, Cindy, how are you? Followed by Gambiz um, Herkmat. Um, Cam Heckmat. Cam and... Um, yeah, we can bring him up. 
Cam, what's his name, Cam? Cam Heckmat, and Cam. he's on his way up right now. Okay, thank you. And then someone, uh, we have Sean from Councilmember Coretz's office is here. Cindy and Cam, welcome. Thank you. Who thank wants to go first? Thank you, council members. Hi, I'm Cindy Starrett from Latham and Watkins, and we represent the Wilshire Gailey project. Uh, Cam is the developer of Wilshire Gailey and a longtime Westwood stakeholder. We are pleased that we've worked out an agreement with UCLA, Good. and we've uh, submitted a letter uh, to you all with a bunch of details about that. Good. Um, including that was the direction of this committee, right? Yes, sir. We followed your direction. Here. Thank you. <laughs> we followed your direction. Good. Um, and we've worked out language with staff. Um, I know UCLA is also here. Cam wanted to just take a couple minutes, just um, especially for Councilmember Price, just tell you what the project is, if we could do that very quickly, and then come back to the language. Uh, sure. If I may, Councilman. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be here today. Sure. Uh, I'm the uh, developer and long-term long resident of Westwood Village. I've worked uh, on formation of the BID and have built the uh, Center West Building in Westwood, and I'm the owner of the Murdoch Plaza. In, uh, at the cross-section of the Wilshire and Gailey Avenue, we have a uh, triangular-shaped uh, property that uh, is this property triangular shape, and this is Wilshire Boulevard, and it was the previous location of uh, Hollywood Video and a gas station behind it. Here is UCLA property that we are talking about. Now, we have hired a uh, internationally renowned architect, uh, Mr. Uh, Robert Stern, out of New York, to create, because of the shape of this site, a uh, very uh, impressive landmark in Westwood. That Pretty. Uh, that is supposed to be, and that's the uh, west view of this project, that is supposed to be uh, built with amenity. Oh, is, the Wilshire, is that the Wilshire side? So, yeah, this is that Gailey or Wilshire? This, no, is, this is Gailey. This is Gailey. Uh, this is the view from Wilshire. And then um, uh, it has all the amenities. Can you add two minutes, please? And uh, it has a Port Cochere on entrance from the alley to the project uh, yeah. with the swimming pool above and all the amenities that it creates, uh, uh, tra create uh, pedestrian access. Is it all residential or? Uh, it is currently, is currently entitled for a hotel and or a condominium uh, building. Uh, we needed to have this alley vacated uh, and for a larger view, I may I send it out to print today, and they did a big size for me, but maybe they have made it over. We gave you a small version of this attached to the letter. I have a small version. Yeah. Let me just get this in. Here we go. So when we heard this, the alley was in question because of the adjacent UCLA property, right? Actually, it is, uh, it is, uh, here we go. This is better. Uh, this is the project site. Right. This is a UCLA property. The alley used to be here, and Westwood had a, a series of various alleys that over time, and all the red here has been vacated now. Uh, this alley that we are talking about is, uh, is here. The alley that we're talking about is continuation that used to be here of this alley. All of this portion has been vacated. This alley was closed and we dedicated this portion in order to align it with Lindbrook Avenue. And UCLA is okay with that? Yes, we worked out an agreement with UCLA. I know they're here to testify to that too. I think the only um, remaining issue is one that staff raised with us this, um, just this morning, which is there was a condition that referred to agreement from all adjacent property owners. And so we've worked out some language with staff to deal with the third property owner that just hasn't been heard from at all. Okay. What we suggested to staff is that if that property owner never speaks up, which we don't think they will because they don't object to the project, that we wouldn't have to have an affirmative agreement with them, but we would indemnify the city in the event that they raise any objection whatsoever. And so we think... Um, Mr. Yu is okay with that solution, okay. and so w our hope is that you'll adopt the new language that he's prepared as the new Condition 12, 
and then we'd add that additional provision, we would indemnify the city in the event that that third property owner w raised any objection in the future. Got it. Mr. Price? Uh, no, it's like an exciting project. I yes. And a project like this, uh, before it comes to council, you want everyone supportive on all levels mm -hmm. um, from neighborhoods, neighborhood councils, uh, the, the uh, council that. member. We have that. Everyone well, is the supportive. business community. Yep. It just makes it a lot easier when it comes to full council. Um, so I want to... Um, uh, uh, we yes. Have, we have 100% support, and that's why we got the first time the entitlement right. of, of, of the various two of, uh, alternatives for this project. Got it. So we do have uh, full community support. Very good. Felicia, uh, did you fill out a card? I did. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, let's bring up um, Felicia um, Brandon, Brandon from um, UCLA. I just want to hear um, from them. and Thank you for filling out a card. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And I think you used our study a little earlier. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thank you. Glad to see we're well represented. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Buscaiano and Council Member Price. I appreciate you giving us this opportunity. Sure. And as stated by the applicant, Cam Heckman, as well as Cindy Stark, uh, the university is in uh, full agreement with what the terms are that we all were able to step away from. Uh, council when we originally came before you to discuss this issue. Uh, it was something, uh, as per your suggestion, that we work on mm -hmm. this issue or the item together. When we first came before you, there were some conditions that we had in terms of looking at the Bureau of Engineers uh, condition we had to take back for a second and really, really work together to determine what it was that we um, saw on paper and okay. as a property owner in the area had to look at what the conditions were and what we were agreeing to. And as you will see by the letter that I just handed to you that the university has um, agreed not to legally challenge or further oppose the vacation of the alley. But I do want to say that we also want to thank all of those who were involved with this and yes. for their uh, involvement with this because it's often difficult to come to this type of agreement as you could well imagine uh, when you have these type of public-private partnerships if right. you will right and really want to thank the staff of CD5 and as well as your staff who worked with us because there were several hearings that we had to push back and they were quite patient in doing so and willing to work with us to really come to this conclusion because that took a great deal of patience so thanking you and your staff as well as the city overall because the uh, Bureau of Engineering was involved with this and yes. answering a lot of questions. So thank you. Thank you, Felicia. Mm -hmm. Thanks also for uh, working with all the parties involved as well. Um, Sean here from Mr. Koretz's office to speak on this item. Good afternoon. Welcome. Good afternoon, Council Members. I'll be very brief. Uh, Sean Bayless, Council Member Paul Carrett's office. Uh, we're in full support of uh, the project, the request made by the applicant, and the agreement that's been made between UCLA and the, uh, prop the applicant. So we would request that Condition 12 be uh, um, fully replaced by the uh, conditions that were agreed upon by the two parties, and then uh, an additional condition, I believe it would be 13 or 14, I think 14, uh, which would provide for indemnification for the city um, should there be any challenge by the, um, the silent over the years property owner next door. Very good. Thank you. So I know the property owner next door has not said a word. Not to my understanding. They've been notified. This has been openly going on for okay. quite some time. So um, they've had no issues. They've had full knowledge. So this property is not going to come to council and raise hell when this item comes before us? If we don't expect that, but should they, um, okay. well, we're indemnified. We'll listen. Mr. Edmund, you please. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Edmund Yu from Public Works Bureau of Engineering. Uh, I have reviewed the uh, different uh, conditions 
the agreement between UCLA and the applicant and the conditions that is just is something that I can support and I can recommend the committee to add it as a condition of the approval okay. as well as the uh, the indemnity uh, proposal from the applicant at this time on the uh, the other property owner and uh, I think I can recommend for the committee to go along with that too thank you and I will uh, put in the actual wording of that condition after the meeting to the city clerk's office so we can he can put that into the committee report very good okay for full counsel. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Price, any questions? Okay. So with that, we'll approve, um, unless I, objections from Mr. Price, we're good? We'll approve item one, um, amend the BOE report as recommended, and approve the uh, Bureau of Engineering report as amended and send this to council. When can we see this go to council? Um, it'll be in council uh, in about oh, um, two weeks. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Okay, let's take um, item number 10, respective um, time here. Item 10 next. Thank you. Okay. Item number 10 is a motion from Council Members Wiesar and Blumenfeld relative to funding and completing construction of the Broadway Streetscape Master Plan between 1st Street and 11th Street. This uh, matter was also referred to the Budget and Finance Committee. Great. I see um, from Councilmember Weezer's office, Jessica, if you can please come forward to speak on this item. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Mr. Price. Um, Councilmember Weezar has worked on the Broadway Streetscape Master Plan since 2009. It was adopted, uh, the environmental circulated last year, it was adopted by City Planning Commission on Valentine's Day this year, and um, we have been very successful already getting grants to fund various blocks of this construction project. It's a project that narrows the lanes of traffic, widens the sidewalk, reduces pedestrian crosswalk widths to kind of make it a more pedestrian uh, friendly environment. We have the opportunity for street trees on Broadway for the very first time. Uh, so it's a really nice plan. It's, it's also known as a road diet. Uh, we will implement uh, the first phase of it, which is done with bollards and planters and striping, probably by the spring of this year. It was funded by council uh, earlier this year, and we're in the design and sort of implementation process there. And it's a very exciting process. It's a very exciting project that really prioritizes people over vehicles so that we can slow down and enjoy our historic district. Um, of course, that requires funding. Um, we've gotten a grant through the Metro Call for Projects to do two different blocks, two different grant cycles. We've been successful there. We'll continue to look for those grant opportunities. But but we do need to start looking at how do we fund the rest of it because that going block by block by block, uh, you know, my daughter who's now two may be a, a graduate of college by the time we get that done. So we are looking at a, um, a larger overall from first to 11th. It, it's uh, the National Register District is second to Olympic, but because it is a road diet, you sort of have to feather it in and feather it out. Um, so you don't create bottlenecks. So we're looking at sort of an, an overall how do we do this for the city. It's a centerpiece pedestrian project for the city of Los Angeles. It will be a really, really wonderful part of our downtown as it, as it grows. And we've been successful getting grants as, as far as we've gone thus far, but we do need an overall plan. Um, so we're asking you to refer that to staff so we can start figuring out that plan. We don't know the answers right now. It's, a, it's, you know, it's, it's millions of dollars that will be needed over the course of time to deliver this project. So we just need to start looking for those options. Um, one of the options that is in the council member's motion is that um, we're putting in the, the project will will install, at the time we thought it was 50 to 70, it looks like it's more like 50, uh, 48 to 50, new parking meters along Broadway where we have no parking meters right now. So we will... Yeah. <laughs> so we will, and we'll have parking and loading for merchants, which is great. But we will, um, of course, realize some new revenues from those parking meters uh, that the city does not have right now. So we're thinking, can we use some of those revenues to, to help pay the debt service if we were to pull down a bond, for instance, to do this? So we just want to really get creative with the departments and figure out how do we do it. Are costs associated with this just plan, forming this plan? The plan is finished. Um, the master plan okay. is finished. Um, um, the 
actual design and engineering is being done by BOE right now. For instance, the first block we're going to do looks like it's fourth to fifth. That's the first grant that we have through Metro. So all the soft costs, the like fine engineering, kind of where's the curb and gutter, the, the real detailed stuff, that happens on a block-by-block -block basis as part of the project cost. So the projected cost of this entire project is in the millions? Yeah, in the tens of millions. It's 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 ten, it's eleven blocks right in the middle of downtown LA. So we have you know we have a we have a crown of the street that's really steep, and if you bring the curbs out, then you might have too small of a curb to meet ADA. So we, we have to solve all of those things, and that costs money. Um, it looks like it's somewhere between thirty five and fifty million dollars at this point to to really realize the whole thing. We have grants for two of those blocks, so that cuts that down. But we do need to look for a substantial amount of money to get this done. Have you tried Figaro on um, Broadway? I love Figaro Bistro. Love that place. Love Figaro Bistro. Support Figaro Bistro. Yes. They turned the old Shaver right. cafeteria into a beautiful French restaurant and completely refurbished it. They do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But the parking's brutal. But we're going to fix this after we approve this. <laughs> <laughs> well, there will be some parking, and there'll right. be a, in front of them, even as of next year when, well, we, do the that, when we do the dress rehearsal, but yeah. there'll be space. The, the great joy of this is because we're bringing those curbs out, and we're bumping back yes. in for the parking and loading. There won't be this not between 7 right. and 9, not between 3 and 7. Right. It'll be 24-hour access That's to their right. loading and parking, so they could have a valet at breakfast if they wanted one, right. which right now they can't do, because from 7 to 9, you can't this stop. Great. You know, what Mr. Weezer is doing on Broadway in the downtown area is just incredible. I, in 1997, I worked a footbeat on Broadway, one of my first assignments at LAPD. Wow. And just remember chasing drug addicts and drug, I mean, just the drug offenses there is incredible. The turnaround is just unbelievable. And it's the efforts like this that help improve uh, the streetscape uh, in the downtown area and Everywhere I go, I share the story of the turnaround in Los Angeles, in the Hollywood area, and we're going to do the same at the harbor. So, I um, any questions, Mr. Price? No, it sounds like an exciting, uh, uh, exciting effort. Yes. And real collaboration with the business community uh, mm. and uh, the public sector. I think it's right. making a difference. It's making a real state. And it's becoming a template for what's possible in other parts of the city. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's so, certainly um, been a long time coming. Without objection, we'll, um, we'll approve item 10 and send that. Thank you, Jessica. Give Mr. Weezer our best. Thank you. Uh, just for a point of clarification, uh, Mr. Chair, will you be holding that in committee for the report to come back? Um, what's the timeline on the... Um, well, it's also referred to the Budget and Finance Committee that's as well. Correct. So, oh, that's right. I see that now. So would you like to hold it in committee? Let's and hold it until it's heard in Budget and Finance. What's that? They'd be sending it on if you send, send it, it to budget. Send it okay, on. let's just send send it forthwith. Send it on. Yeah. Yeah. We'll that, send it. that way we can start working on it. Okay. And not this wait for the budget and finance? Well, we're asking them to agendize it as well. It, they have to refer it to staff as well. That's okay. sort of a technical question for the clerk, I think. Does it have to be referred by both committees before the report can even start? I don't know. Yes. Uh, okay. it, it either has to okay, be so waived let's, by let's the other committee. Part. Let's okay. do our part. Let's do our part. But Thank you. CLA staff understands where this project is. I've been working with the council office for some time. So okay, very good. It's not like we're not already in this okay. mode. Okay. Let's approve this and send this off. Thank you very much, Thank sir. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Okay, item number three. A couple more items, so bear with us. Item number three is the report from the city attorney and an ordinance relative to finding that the public interest and necessity require the 6th Street Viaduct Replacement Project and the acquisition of property therefore. This one was also noticed for a public hearing in council on October 23rd, 2013. All right, let's take a card here. We have one card on this item. Um, that's Joseph um, Schnarr? Schwar? Schwar. Thank you. Welcome. And we'll hear from staff. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, council members. <laughs> Excuse me. Got a little sniffle. Uh, my name is Joseph Schwar with Peterson Law Group. Uh, we're attorneys for Stover Seed Company. We've got uh, Mr. John McShane, the president of Stover, in the audience today. Um, essentially, I'm here today to uh, bring to the committee's awareness uh, an issue with one of the lots being taken within the 
uh, one F uh, tract. Uh, Stover Seed Company owns assessor parcel numbers 5164 007, uh, 002, 18, 19, and 20. Three of those uh, front on 6th Street where the project will be. Uh, but 002 fronts on Willow Street on the north side of the block. Uh, that's, that, that lot is not necessary for the project. And Stover would like to retain that, that lot. There's a lot tie between that lot and the other three lots. But that's just to provide parking for the use on the th three southerly lots. Once those are taken out, there'll be no need for that lot tie. It should go away. And Stover should keep the, the property on the north side of the block. Um, I want to point out there's no property being taken on the north side of the block to the east or the west of mm -hmm. lot 002. Uh, it's really, I think it might have been thrown in there just because of the lot tie agreement, which, uh, again, once the use is taken out on the other lots, it won't have any effect or, ne or need. Okay. And that's really all I've got. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Council. So we have someone from the City Attorney's Office, BOE, come forward, please. It's, when do we anticipate public hearing to take place on this? October 23rd. October 23rd. Yes. Good afternoon, members. Good afternoon. Deputy City Attorney <clears throat> John Minor presenting uh, the report before you. Uh, seeking initial approval for the acquisition of uh, several properties in connection with the 6th Street uh, Viaduct Improvement Project. I have with me at the table Alfred Mata, the project engineer, and Uri Jimenez, the chief of real estate for the Bureau of Engineering. This is probably the largest infrastructure project that uh, BOE now has um, uh, that is now undergoing. It's a $401 million project which will uh, require the demolition, the complete demolition of the existing 6th Street Bridge and uh, the complete uh, reconstruction uh, of that structure. The completion date is uh, projected for December 2018 and the report before you seeking authority to acquire by eminent domain the property specified in the report is necessary in order to keep the project on that um, schedule and that target uh, completion date. The bridge is an 80, the, the viaduct is an 80 year old structure which since about the mid 1940s has been suffering from a chemical reaction process within the concrete called alkali silica reaction. Scientists call it a ASR. And this is a, um, um, a reaction that was caused due to the, I guess, the grade of concrete that was initially used back when the bridge was constructed and opened in 1933 and it's um, having a reaction uh, which is causing the concrete to weaken and sort of fluff off. Um, over the years, there have been many attempts to um, control or limit or slow that process, but it's, it's just like a cancer in the concrete. It just keeps eating away, and the bridge um, could be subject to significant damage during a significant uh, earthquake event. And so the... Um, the Bureau has decided to use this opportunity to uh, demolish the bridge and reconstruct a um, modern 21st century design bridge, which I'd like to show you a um, rendition of. I remember uh, rendering it. Ted Jordan, ladies and gentlemen. There he is. <laughs> Thanks, Ted, for your help. That's beautiful. Wow. Futuristic look at yes. You'll see uh, park space underneath too, I remember right? Park space underneath, um, sweeping arches integrated throughout the uh, span of the, it's over 3,200 3, square feet plus from the west 
at Mateo Street, across the river, across the railroad tracks, into Boyle Heights. Mm -hmm. uh, the state of California owns a small portion of it, but most of the bridge is um, is city property and is an historic um, uh, property. And so, during the um, the planning and the design, the um, the plan was to incorporate these iconic arches that you see on the bridge now and you often see in several uh, movies uh, Gangster Squad and others that everybody knows yeah, that, that it's the Sixth Street Bridge and so this concept will um, modernize and update and uh, improve and I think really sharpen uh, the look of the bridge as well as um, right. make several other engineering and design improvements. Thanks, Ted. So we're going to hear public comment, um, I'm sorry, a public hearing on this on um, October 23rd. Yes. And um, where is that going to be held? Council. Here, council in council. Yeah, council. Full, in full public hearing council. Okay, right. got it. And so we're here today seeking your um, initial approval um, to acquire the properties that are specified here. We've had months, if not years, of negotiations with numerous property owners that are impacted uh, by the bridge mm -hmm. and the ones that you see uh, in the report are the last properties and owners that we've been un simply unable to um, negotiate a voluntary acquisition with. On page four of the report we list the properties um, by parcel number and we identify the amounts the significant dollar amounts that the city has uh, offered as a, f a fair and just compensation to each of these uh, remaining owners. Um, <clears throat> how, how are we paying for these properties? These properties are coming. F yeah, Alfred, Alfred. Is that an Alfred question? That's an Alfred <laughs> question. This project uh, is receiving a significant amount of funding from the federal government, and the right of way acquisitions are funded 100% by the Federal Highway Administration. And they've already been blessed. These the dollars. budget's been approved okay. for each of these properties. Yes. Got it. Okay. And federal highway money is <clears throat> not affected by the shutdown. Got it. That's good to know. Thanks, Paul. So, so I presume you've heard that the, the business uh, concern that the property is not uh, is not required, or his property is not required for this portion of the project. Which, the uh, chief of real estate, I think, could best answer the question. Uh, presented by the uh, representative for Stover Seed. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Thank you. <laughs> the representative of Stover Seed was talking specifically about this property, and the, the, what he was talking about, there's actually, in terms of uh, different parcels, there's actually one, two, three, and then a fourth one that actually fronts to Willow. And uh, the they would like to retain this property, but in effect, they haven't made any counter offers to that effect. This is the first time I hear about this. And the project will need this whole area because the bridge is going to be widened here, and then there's going to be a pedestrian walkway that is going to be used in this area to, to walk off of the bridge. And in addition to that, this whole area, including this lot, will be used for staging. So trucks could potentially come out of that lot or come into that for construction and demolition purposes. So the entire quadrant for the duration of the construction and the demolition of the existing viaduct will be needed for the project. But after construction, is there After the con construction, right. if any remnant par right. properties become available, they would be disposed of accordingly through the Department of General Services. Surplus property. Right. So, surplus property. so let me ask you. Saying, Go ahead. saying alternatively, he's not, they've not made an offer. Correct. So if they did make an offer, uh, it sounds like you're saying it wouldn't be accepted anyway because you need exactly, it. exactly. And one of the things that is that is happening on the bridge, I, I don't know if you've driven over it um, lately or, or at all, but there's a um, a sharp, not really sharp, but a significant sort of angle or kink in the bridge as you're coming from the east to the west. You have to almost make a left hand turn to. Uh, to keep proceeding west, and the uh, engineers have um, designed a structure that will smooth that out, so it's much uh, 
so it's much straighter, gives a better sight line for traffic as you're going uh, west into the setting sun. Um, yeah, you can see the right. And the final alignment has not been completely um, agreed upon, but the bridge will, in all likelihood, move to the north several feet, which is why it's going to eliminate the, um, and Paul, over in that red area, there's a frontage road right there by the, uh, by the red line. That, with the bridge moving north, all of those businesses in that quadrant are going to lose the frontage in front, of their, uh, in front of their businesses, so they won't be able to have any access uh, in or out. And that's because the bridge is, because it's being smooth, smoothed, it's going to move um, a couple of feet um, to, the, uh, to the north. The other uh, deficiencies which are going to be corrected are um, the fact that there's no shoulders for bicyclists. They have substander sidewalks for pedestrians on the bridge now. It, it's, it could be a little dangerous right now, but now, w with the new structure, there's, there are going to be um, medians, shoulders, um, better crash, um, crash rails that will uh, absorb uh, modern-day uh, traffic collisions and um, better better sight lines and roadway width. So it's an important project. It's um, a significant project in dollar amounts. And in order to keep it on schedule, um, we need this initial approval and ultimately council approval to uh, for an ordinance, a resolution of necessity to acquire the remaining properties by eminent domain. In, in the acquisition of the remaining properties, maybe another Alfred question, you're assuring us that there are enough federal dollars to acquire these properties? Yes. Yes, okay. The big question, though, is can we do it within budget? What's that? The big question is, is as we move forward on these, will there be additional dollars necessary? And I've been our general fund dollars, or are you talking about no, federal? It may be federal dollars, but the budget now, we want to keep it within the context of the existing budget. But the, there will be federal dollars available, but right now, as we move forward in time, right. that market is changing and it's becoming hotter, mm -hmm. and they're understanding what, you know, the city's involved with, the bridge. Right. So there is a little... Construction costs, materials. Well, this is, the, the market is changing, and... Right. and, and and the cost of those acquisitions is rising. So we want to move fast on this. Got it. Yeah, and one of the, um, just speaking to your point about um, budget constraints, one of the, un the unknowns in any uh, eminent domain action is what will be the actual uh, determined value. The city uses its appraisers and its staff to uh, work up the amounts of the statutory offers that we've uh, uh, made to each of the property owners. It'll be those amounts or something very close to those amounts that once we file a case, the city will deposit into the court as the uh, reasonable and just compensation for this particular taking. But as um, the CLA has mentioned, property values are coming back, things are increasing, mm -hmm. and by the time we get to, say, a trial on the valuation of X particular parcel, it could be higher. Um, who knows how much higher, but it could be higher than the amount that the city deposits. Why so many properties involved? I mean, I thought we are just replacing a bridge. Well, do <laughs> uh, you, 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 yeah. you want me to try to yeah. answer that a little bit? It's a big bridge. I understand so that, the, but... Go ahead. The, there's two things I think that John mentioned, to, mentioned earlier. One, the bridge is being widened to accommodate pedestrian walkways that are more adequate to current right. standards and bicycle traffic and to provide a center lane median. So that's one item, one issue. The other issue is because of that kink, that sharp kink as we cross over the Alley River, we have a different alignment. So if you look at the map that Paul's holding up there, you see the red lines? Right. That's the new alignment. And you see it's yeah. much wider than the existing right. viaduct and it's on a different alignment. Therefore it crosses over properties that the current viaduct is not on. Got it, got it. So, th so it, in the EIR, we identified up to 32 potential properties being impacted. Okay. That, that kink in there was, that dog leg was a, 
that it was important for we to stretch it out for safety and traffic safety and Got pedestrian it. Safety. For, for traffic safety, pedestrian safety purposes. Meet current standards, design standards. Got it. And, and another feature that is going to happen uh, when this bridge is completed, that that's not there presently, is below and alongside the bridges, there are going to be um, green open spaces that folks can use as uh, right. parks and... I understand retail too? Re retail? Um, we haven't identified all the, the, the exact programming of what's going to be down there, mm -hmm. but we certainly don't want to leave just vacant dirt underneath. Right, we right, want to leave right. something that's an amenity for the community. So we're looking at potentially okay. having some As retail space. Now. Yeah, there's correct. Nothing, nothing there. Just correct. Okay. I have a motion for this item? Move Moved by Mr. Price. Um, without objection, we will uh, s approve item number three. three. Thank you. Thank you very much for your Thank report. Thank you. Our um, last item. I believe we item, have yeah. oh, two more. Sorry. Item number four. Item number so four. We have to hear a four and five next, right? Yes. Yes. So item number four. It is a consideration of the budget motion number 21, and this is from Council Members Boos, Gaino, and Koretz, relative to allowing the Bureau of Street Services to allow hot mix asphalt genera generated at the city's two asphalt plants to outside non-city agencies. And this was scheduled pursuant to the Council Action of May 23rd, 2013. So the Bureau of Street Services budget proposal for this current fiscal year says BSS has not been approved to sell hot mix asphalt to other outside agencies that could partially pay for the direct costs of employees assigned to the respective asphalt plants. The city attorney's office must provide the necessary guidance to get this proposal approved. I see Mr. Ted Jordan here before us. Can you please give us a, a brief overview of our asphalt plants and their operations and explain how this proposal will help them lower costs? Yes, I'd like to kind of focus on sort of what the legal issue is. The uh, there's the, the concept under consideration is the uh, ability of the city to sell asphalt that it produces beyond its own need. So we produce our own asphalt, and that's fine. But we have, the under the proposal, it's the capability of producing asphalt in excess of what we need. Right. And the question is, may the city sell that excess asphalt to other willing buyers, municipalities, municipalities right. they're, they're a large consumer of asphalt, just mm -hmm. like the city of Los Angeles right. is, as a way to offset the costs of the facility. We've taken a look at that in the context of the charter. The charter uh, does provide certain limitations on the city's, uh, city's power. In particular, Charter Section 104G has a provision that says that the city shall not engage in any purely commercial or industrial enterprise except upon a majority vote of the voters of the city voting on the question, unless the enterprise was engaged in by the city at the time the charter becomes effective. Um, and it goes on, but the, the important point is that the city may not engage in a purely commercial or industrial enterprise. The voters of the city in adopting the charter, and this provision was in prior charters, mm -hmm. uh, do not want the city to, in effect, become a business enterprise that would compete with private enterprise. So when was the charter adopted in 1993? You know, I don't have the exact date. 2000. Somewhere there. That provision, though, was in previous charters as well. So if the city were to, uh, from time to time, uh, have, you know, the occasional surplus amounts, as compared to specifically manufacturing excess beyond its need, the, the occasional surplus amount would be something that I don't think we'd have any trouble with the city selling. Uh, the city does have other products that are the, the byproducts of its operations. Mm -hmm. uh, there, is, there are plants that produce, uh, well, we generate biosolids that we, right. we don't sell, but we, we use on our farm in Kern County. We can generate mulch from the, the waste that we collect. There's uh, water that's actually sold through agreements that include DWP, uh, but that's the byproduct of our wastewater treatment. In this case, it's not really a byproduct of anything. It's just we're specifically manufacturing a product. Mm -hmm. So we're concerned about the feasibility of a plan that would, that would essentially put the city in the, in the asphalt business for purposes of selling to other municipalities. And we would helping in, our general fund, ultimately. We would be helping the general fund, uh, but we would also be competing with those companies, private sector companies, that are in the business of making asphalt. Mm. Got it. 
again, I want to distinguish between sort of the the occasional from time to time we, we've made more than we need versus a, a regular course of conduct where we're, we're making it specifically to sell it. Got it. And maybe a specific question, Mr. Price. You say we're currently making it to sell it. We, we currently are, are producing it in an excessive amount to sell or we Without can that, and we're going to, you're asking. We're, we're looking at prospectively. Uh, I don't know if there was anyone from street services that, as to what their actual operation is. And your customer would be other municipal cities, uh, municipal departments, or I, I believe that was what the uh, two or who, who yeah. I believe that would be the plan, but we our street services different. representative can address the issue. Hi, right, Keith Mose, uh, division manager for the researching division. Um, at this time, we currently don't sell asphalt. Um, we do. Uh, our plants are capable of right now producing 300,000 tons of asphalt per asphalt plant for 600,000 tons a year. As have, needed basis? On an as needed basis, specifically for our resurfacing crews. We have worked with Lawa, Port of LA, uh, Reckon Park, Sanitation, DWP to supply them asphalt that basically they've uh, paid us for, so to speak, to use on uh, city projects. Um, we're currently in the process of rebuilding asphalt plant one to uh, basically double its production capacity. And based on our uh, scheduling, we would have the capacity to have excess asphalt on particular days based on our resurfacing crews. Right now, our sole focus of uh, any type of asphalt that either were purchased from an outside vendor or produced by our asphalt plants is strictly used for our resurfacing crews for the resurfacing program and other operations. So we need to think outside the box here and uh, looking at potentially a $250 million deficit as we've been talking about that for years in the city. Um, an opportunity for us to make an extra dollar to help with our general fund dollars. I, I see that before us. But you're telling me, Mr. Jordan, that in order for us to um, change, the, obviously, make, change the charter, we would need a voter approval. Is that what you're telling me? Uh, in order to change the charter, yes. And then the for us to sell asphalt. You wouldn't have to change the charter in order to sell asphalt. The charter actually opens the door it to that, it. but it. the charter provision that opens the door itself requires a vote, a, a majority vote of the voters. I, I want to distinguish between selling to outside entities, say the county or, or any other city, versus selling it to other city departments or providing it to other city departments. Sure, it's a that, that, completely that would, different ball, ball we, we'll game, We look right? at that as a different matter. Sure, sure, that would sure. be the city basically making its own asphalt. Sure. Okay, so next steps on moving this proposal forward. Um, you need some time on your end? I mean, we can, we can produce a, let's do that. a written report that let's would that. sort of lay this out. 45 days, is that okay? That should be fine. All right, let's do that. It, it's, an, it's an issue that we, the office has opined on before, and there, so there are a number of written opinions okay. that we've issued in the past, so we can reference and those. if we well. can have the CAO to give us a financial analysis at the same time. But David, David's looking at him. He's just shaking his head. He's going to kill him. <laughs> yeah, I, and, I, and I recognize this is not the answer that helps the city from a budget standpoint. I, mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Sure. David, <laughs> Wait, how are you, sir? All right. Can you give us a financial analysis of 45? I know we, we've been talking about this as, and, and our, even in our um, SOSLA initiative. But um, um, we, we can try. Um, I'm not sure if we can do it within the 45-day window because of the workload we're assuming right now in SOSLA. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. 22,000 uh, um, report back items. Our, that's just, you know, being Please, 60 days? Um, how about this? Once we file that report, we'll get on this. Okay. Um, but, you know, we need to file that report first, so I don't want to. Okay. And do you need to work hand-in-hand, hand, Ted, or we well, my, wait for my, you? Well, my analysis is really more of the legal feasibility, not okay. the right. financial side of it. Yeah, his, has, his has to come first. Okay, got it. Yeah. So let's, let's, <laughs> let's get that report back in 45 days in the CAO's office in 90. How's that? Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Sure. Certainly. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen, for your report. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Um, hey, oh, Mr. Chair, to clarify for the record, so that item has been continued. Continued. Yes. Thank you, Michael. Sorry. Uh, let's look at uh, our final item. I don't know. Marathon five. Public Works <laughs> Gang Reduction Meeting. <laughs> thank you, Dennis Gleason. <laughs> 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 item number five. 
Item number five was continued from two meetings from August 7th and August 21st. It's a report from the Bureau of Engineering relative to the recommendations identifying changes to the processes that impact the Bureau of Engineering pertaining to the historic core sidewalk dining. And this has also been referred to the Personnel and Animal Welfare Committee. Okay. Um, BOE, want to give a report. Mr. Weezar's office, want to give a report on this? Do we have a motion? Are we good? Everyone's good on this? Everyone's good? Okay, motion to approve. Thank, moved by Mr. Price. We will um, approve item five without objection. Send that to council. And um, I'm actually going to take a visit to St. Vincent Alley in a little bit with Sid, and we'll see you down there. Okay, with that, um, this Public Works Gain Reduction Committee meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all for uh, your work. and. Uh, have a good rest of the day. All right.